My Hero Academia episode 141 titled Villain finally reveals the UA traitor who has been aiding all for one the entirety of MHA. The episode opens up with Shigaraki returning to the villain's hideout where he's incredibly damaged from the battle against Star and Stripe. Shigaraki would comment that as long as people look up to All Might and remember his heroic deeds, he'll always be frustrated. All for one would comment on this subject explaining that he and Shigaraki's consciousnesses are combining into one since All for One is sharing that hatred Shigaraki feels towards All Might. Despite them both feeling a significant hatred for Star with the damage that she did, All for One would go on to explain that although they weren't able to take New Order for themselves, a massive obstacle has been cleared. Which is true considering if One for All and New Order were used in battle, Shigaraki and All for One probably wouldn't have stood a chance. But with New Order out of the way, they can now move on to their next goal, which is to take One for all. Darby would then interject, explaining that he's losing patience waiting around since Endeavor is still out being a hero, and Darby would like nothing more than to destroy his old man with the rest of the Todoroki family. All for one would reply to Darby saying that they're alike, but with one big difference. That is, all for one plans multiple routes to a single goal. Darby right now only really has one route to his goal, which is just to take his father head on in battle, whereas someone like All for One methodically plans different routes to achieve a certain goal, which we'll see an example of this later on in the episode. We eventually cut back to Class 1A, who are all using the little time they have to train for the upcoming war. We see a lot of standout moments from the students, but it's the Deku versus Bakugo fight that shows the most development. If you compare their fight here to the first fight they had back in Season 1, it's clear how far these characters have come and just how much their respected quirks have leveled up. Not to mention that Bakugo has become so much more effective with his explosion quirk and even comments that the training program with Endeavor really had an impact on the way he uses his quirk. Bakugo would go on to defeat Deku with his new cluster technique and we finally get a return of a broccoli haired Deku which is always hilarious to see. We see Todoroki training to use both his fire and ice at once so he'll be able to counter Dabby's flames. I won't give too much away here but just note that for you anime only watchers, Todoroki Loki's quirk is about to level up significantly. Kaminari would then ask why they aren't going to war against the villains now, considering that both Shigaraki and All for One are weakened, but Bakugo would go on to explain three important points. The first point is that they can't find the villains at the moment, considering they're hiding out and All for One is a master at going under the radar. Secondly, Shigaraki was incomplete back in season 6, but he's now much more accustomed to his quirks. I mean, he is currently battle damaged, but is still way more effective than he was when he first woke up. Not to mention that his regeneration quirk is now way more effective than it was in the previous war. And the final point is that currently the villains decide when the war begins, considering Shigaraki still has access to Ragdoll's location quirk, so they can come for Deku whenever they feel like doing so. Bakugo would also explain that if this does happen, the heroes are most likely screwed, since they would end up being caught off guard as well as having no time to prepare. While the UA students are discussing this, notice that two students in particular are missing from the training, that being Aoyama and Invisible Girl. It just so turns out that off in the woods, Aoyama is speaking with his parents, while Invisible Girl is hiding within the area, eavesdropping. And this is where we finally get the reveal. After six long seasons, the UA traitor is finally revealed to be Aoyama, who was working with All for One this entire time alongside his family. We would find out Aoyama was actually born quirkless just like Deku but due to Aoyama's parents being incredibly wealthy and having knowledge of All for One's existence they had All for One give Aoyama a quirk when he was younger which would of course be his naval laser. Because of this exchange Aoyama and his family would end up serving under All for One and this would end up leading to Aoyama being sent to enroll in UA since All Might would be a teacher there and would be forced to feed All for One information on Class 1A. In particular all the times that they were unsupervised, which is what led to the USJ raid as well as the training camp raid, which led to Bakugo being captured and All Might losing one for all. Just as the hype is building up as well, Deku is alerted about Aoyama and goes to find out himself what is happening, which leads Deku to find out about Aoyama. There are a lot of emotions stirred up here and due to the panic, Aoyama would try to defend his family by firing off naval laser towards Deku, which would be intended 
it to hurt Deku, considering his danger sense would go off. Just as the laser is about to hit, Invisible Girl jumps in front, since she's able to reflect light and counter the laser, which is when we finally get our first look at Invisible Girl. Throughout all seven seasons up to now, we have never seen her face, and today finally marks the first time we've ever seen what she looks like. Invisible Girl would scream out to Aoyama exactly what he had planned all this time, since they were in the same classes as well as living in the same dorms. But just as the tensions begin to rise, Deku would use Black Whip to restrain Aoyama and his family. You can see just how much this hurts Deku as well. I mean, despite his best efforts, Deku always seems to get hurt by All for One through other people. First it was Lady Nagant, and now it's Aoyama. Deku just can't seem to catch a break, and you can tell that Deku is probably incredibly frustrated that he didn't see the signs about Aoyama. Aoyama and his family are taken in for questioning, and everyone is completely shocked by this reveal. Yue was suspicious for a while about having a traitor amongst them, but they never had guessed that it was a student who was the traitor. Aoyama's parents would do most of the speaking during this interrogation, explaining if they ever betrayed All for One, they would have been killed for it, and they have been shown multiple times what All for One does to traitors. Aoyama would finally speak up and explain that he just wanted to become a hero as well as be happy with the rest of his class, which for a while Aoyama believed was possible. But when Deku left UA briefly and had the responsibility of fighting against All for One, Aoyama realized just how miserable he was, feeling incredible guilt for the situation he had put Deku in. Not to mention again that Aoyama is kind of the reason why Bakugo was captured and All Might lost one for all. But it's clear that the characters understand why Aoyama needed to follow orders because otherwise he and his family would have been killed. Deku would then reach out to Aoyama, refusing to see him as a villain. He would point out that Aoyama has made heroic choices in the past. Deku would then reach out his hand to Aoyama, yelling that he can still become a hero if he wants and do the right thing. These moments make MHA amazing to watch. Just the chills that I got from this scene made the episode amazing. The fact that the show has been building this up for multiple seasons now and finally letting it all out, giving enough time for the reveal to breathe and allowing our characters to explain how they're feeling is phenomenal story writing. Seriously, hats off to Horikoshi. A one in a million chance would click with our students though when they realise that they can use the situation to attack the villains first, bringing the episode full circle. Bakugo earlier explained that if the villains attacked first, then the heroes are most likely done for, but now they can use Aoyama to get in contact with All for One and get the villains exactly exactly where they need them to be, which is where the episode ends. I genuinely believe that the All Out War wouldn't start until way later in the season, but it seems like they're wasting no time and we're going to see the All Out War start much sooner, which means that the hype starts now. The show's climax is finally building up and I for one can't wait to see it. There are so many incredible story moments that are yet to be animated and I can't wait for those moments to finally be animated. That being said, as always, if you're going to discuss manga spoilers, then please Please use a spoiler warning to not spoil for anime only watchers. If you would like to see more from me, Internet Stranger, click on this video next. If not, then I hope you have a good day. Pine Tree logging off.